Good morning and welcome to our service this Sunday morning, which is, of course, Mothering Sunday. Because it's Mothering Sunday, I'm going to do rather a different form of service this morning. It's a kind of all age service. So thank you for participating in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So we have a special prayer for Mothering Sunday. God of compassion, whose son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and in sorrow we may know the power of your presence to bind and to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. So we make a confession to God for all the things that we've done wrong. Jesus promised that faith will make us whole. In faith, let us ask God to forgive us for all the ways that we have let him down. Father, forgive us for all our promises to live better lives, which we have not kept. For all our promises to love each other and to love you, which have come to nothing. For all our dreams and efforts which have achieved nothing. For all the times when we have not been the kind of people you want us to be. God of love, teach us to put our faith in you rather than ourselves. Teach us to love you so that we can truly love one another. Bring us back to you, forgive us and help us to feel sure of your eternal love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Often we take for granted God's gifts and all his goodness to us. Let us take time now to rejoice and to be thankful for putting us into such a wonderful world where there is so much to make us happy. Thank you, Father, for giving us family and friends to have fun with, work with and talk to. Thank you, Father. For so many people, with so many different ways, different languages and different ideas to make our lives so rich and interesting. Thank you, Father. Help us to think like Jesus and love others as you love us. For letting us help you and help one another. Thank you, Father. Thank you for giving us each other. Thank you for trusting us to share your love with others. Thank you for calling us to be your helpers and followers. Thank you for all your gifts to us. Amen. Now, unusually this morning, we have two Old Testament readings. The first is from the book of Exodus, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Now, a man from the house of Levi went and took to wife a daughter of Levi. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a goodly child, she hid him for three months. And when she could hide him no longer, she took for him a basket made of bulrushes and daubed it with bitumen and pitch. And she put the child in it and placed it among the reeds at the river's edge. And his sister stood at a distance to know what would be done to him. Now the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river and her maidens walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds, and she sent her maid to fetch it. When she opened it, she saw the child, and lo, the babe was crying. She took pity on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the girl went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him, and the child grew, and she brought him to the Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she named him Moses, for she said, Because I drew him out of the water. And our second reading is from the first book of Samuel, chapter 1, verses 20 to 24. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. And the man, Echelna, and all his house 
went up to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and to pay his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, As soon as the child is weaned, I will bring him, that he may appear in the presence of the Lord and abide there for ever. Alkanah, her husband, said to her, Do what seems best to you. Wait until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord establish his word. So the woman remained and nursed her son until she weaned him. And when she weaned him, she took him up with her and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. And the child was young. We'd originally been hoping to reopen our churches today and that would have seemed very fitting as Mothering Sunday is the day when traditionally everyone goes to their mother church, their home church. However, we decided we ought to delay a little to be in line with the general government advice to be cautious, to carry on taking precautions for the sake of one another. That feeling that we should be taking care of one another actually brings us closer to the way most of us celebrate and think about Mother's Day nowadays, by remembering our mothers, remembering all that they've done and continue to do for us, because mothers do tend to be very protective over their children. It's always quite hard to find the right Bible readings to use on Mothering Sunday. Many mothers in the Bible seem to have a pretty tough time. There are lots of stories about loss and sadness including the ones about Jesus' mother, Mary. And they don't always seem the right ones to use on a day when we're celebrating. Some of the other mothers in the Bible aren't always very good role models. I think about Rebecca, who was pretty sneaky. She had one son who was very much her favourite, and she used deceit to get things for him. So, on Mothering Sunday, we often end up talking about the two mothers I read about just now the mothers of Moses and of Samuel. In a way, these stories could seem sad too. Both mothers give up their children into the care of strangers. But they do what they do so they can do right by their sons, do what's best for them. Moses is in danger of being killed by the Egyptian pharaoh, who's killing all the baby Hebrew boys. By allowing the Egyptian princess to bring him up, Moses' mother saves his life, and to do that, she's prepared to accept that she can only act as his nurse for a short while, and then she'll lose touch with him. Hannah had promised God that if she had a son, she would dedicate his life to be spent in God's service. By keeping her promise, she knows that Samuel will grow up to be a great religious and spiritual leader under Eli's guidance, and so she accepts that she'll only be able to visit him from time to time because she knows that's the right thing to do. There have been other more recent occasions in history where mothers have needed to send their children away. There were the children evacuated into the country away from bombs in World War II. Some parents feel that boarding school is the best place for their children to grow and to do well, perhaps because they're working overseas or they're moving around a lot and they feel that their children need stability. Or perhaps they let them go away to study something that they're especially good at, like sport or music, in a way that's not possible near a home. It's sometimes necessary to allow children to go into hospital, away from their families, for important medical treatment. Mothers know that sometimes they need to sacrifice their own wish to be with their children in order to make sure that they're safe or to help them to do well. Love is challenging, and it's about making the loved one happy rather than ourselves. That's the way God loves us, sending Jesus to suffer and to die so that we could grow close to him and understand how much he loves us. If our own mothers weren't loving in that way, didn't offer us that kind of support, and for those whose mothers didn't always act in their best interests, it's even more important to know and enjoy God's amazing love for us. And the love that God shows us is the way that he wants us to love other people, always having their best interests at heart and putting them first. And so 
In the best way we can online, we share the peace together. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my own peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. So let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father who made the world and cares for every one of his children here on earth. We believe in God the Son, who showed us God's love, lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love for others. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who makes us strong and brings us together into one family in his church. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're going to make our prayers now. When I say... We are all your children. Will you respond with, help us grow in love? We are all your children. Help us grow in love. So as we gather together in the presence of our parent God, let us pray. Loving Father, we pray for all those for whom following you is dangerous. For the Christian faith brings persecution. We pray too for those who are new to faith and for those whose faith seems to be lost and who no longer walk with you. We thank you for the example of those whose faith shines out in their lives and who have helped us on our own journey. We are all your children. Help us grow in love. Loving Father, we pray for those who are forced to leave their homes, their families or their countries. We pray for those who, because of war or famine, must watch their children die. We pray for your peace and comfort for those who need it most and that you will show us the part you want us to play in relieving the suffering of others. We are all your children. Help us grow in love. Loving Father, we pray for all the mothering that goes on in this community. We pray for the care offered by our schools and the different organisations within our parishes. We pray too for those who have never known mothering and who crave tenderness. We pray for those who are weary of the struggle to be strong by themselves. Help them to know the love of you and of others. We are all your children. Help us grow in love. Loving Father, on this Mothering Sunday, we pray for all new parents and their babies and all who will be giving birth soon. We pray for all those who are vulnerable, that they may be protected from harm. We are all your children. Help us grow in love. Loving Father, we remember those whose mothers have died and are still remembered with great affection. We pray too for those who have never known their parents or known them for only a short time. We pray for our own mothers and grandmothers, rejoicing in what they gave us and commending them to your protection forever. We are all your children. Help us grow in love. Loving Father, we give you thanks for the comfort you provide in all our troubles and for the richness of all our relationships. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we join in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, God, for the love of our mothers. Thank you, God, for their care and concern. Thank you, God, for the joys they have shared for us. 
Thank you, God, for the pains they are born for us. Thank you, God, for all that they give us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Lord of hope fill us with all joy and hope in believing. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. May the joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with us and all those whom we love, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. So thank you for joining us for our service this morning. Gordon will be back this evening with evening prayer from the attic. And on Tuesday, we'll have morning prayer, which I'll be leading. And on Friday, Ruth will be leading, leading communion from the Book of Common Prayer. We also have our telephone service, which goes out on Sunday morning. And on Thursday evening, the telephone service of Evensong that you can join in with. And the churches are open for private prayer. Tuesday afternoon at St Michael's and St Matthew's in Darlington is open on a Wednesday morning and a Saturday afternoon. I hope that you have a very good week. Thank you.